Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? <clears throat> so you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook page. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. Um, I come here live every Thursday evening and I paint with you guys. Um, and we're going to do that tonight. So um, it is 9 p.m. Eastern, which is my regular time. Um, let's see. I'm a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador. And you guys, my husband Sean is here to answer questions for us as we go. So if you have questions along the way, pop on and we'll get through those too. Um, I posted a picture on my Facebook page today at Brush by Brandy of what we're going to do tonight. And it's a really pretty look. Actually, I'm going to scoop myself over here really quick and I'm going to show you guys what I'm working on. So you do you. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and move and follow you. Okay, you do you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is that I'm working on here and I actually really really love how it's coming out and what makes me sad is I know that you guys probably can't see the texture of this on camera but it's got a linen type texture where and I'm going to show you guys tonight how we create this texture and then it's also a combination of the metallic paints the uh, Dixie Belle Moonshine Metallics um, and then the regular paints as well and it just gives it this really kind of grungy metallic look but we're going to go through this look tonight. So that's what we're working on. Let me give you guys a really quick materials list of the colors that we're going to use. So does everybody have their pen and paper in hand? I do. We still do that, right? Pen and paper. So the colors I'm going to use tonight are Dixie Bell Haint Blue. It is or it ain't blue. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're stretching. Yeah. Um, Stormy Seas, which is one of my favorite Dixie Bell colors. Vintage Duck Egg. We're gonna use uh, Moonshine Metallics and Steel Magnolia, a little bit of Gravel Road, and then um, I am actually using my Dixie Bell Metallic Silver, the old Metallic Silver, and the reason I'm using it, you guys, is because it wasn't really silver, it was kind of a white metallic. So I'm using this as a white metallic. This product is discontinued though. So if you don't, a lot of us still have the Dixie Bell Metallic Silver on hand. Um, cause it hasn't been that long. So if you have the metallic silver, that's what I'm using, but I wanted to give you, give you guys an alternative. And what also works is the pearlescent glaze and you could tint it with a little bit of cotton or one of our white paints. And that gives you a white, a white with a metallic sheen or a pearlescent sheen. So those two can work together. I like the pearlescent glaze. It's a little bit thick. So it still gives you that same sheen. And all I'm looking for from that uh, metallic is a little bit of sheen. So, um, and the last material I'm using is Dixie Bell Sandbar. The sandbar is what you see on here right now. Um, I gave this piece uh, a good cleaning with Dixie Bell White Lightning. I gave it a coat of clear boss just as a preventative. I don't think these are bleeders, but it was a dark wood. Um, I wanted to make sure. So they have Dixie Bell Boss and then two coats of sandbar. The sandbar is to give me coverage so that I can lay a decorative finish on top of this and not worry about whether I'm getting coverage. So I have my coverage. All I can do now is decorate it. See, I just want a mic drop because I just was told that it, it ain't silver. <laughs> I'm done. I'm I know. Out. I know. I know. It, it, it ain't silver. I'm telling you guys, this was, so, this was not a silver. What we're going to do is go over the colors once again. Okay. Paint Blue, Stormy Seas, Vintage Duck Egg, Gravel Road, Moonshine Metallics and Steel Magnolia, and the Old Metallic Silver on top of Sandbar. So what am I at? Seven colors there? Seven colors. And then I gave you an alternative for the Metallic Silver since that's not available right now. But it's a, it's a minor product anyways and the glaze is a totally suitable alternative. So anyway, let's get started painting. Let's paint, you guys. Yeah, seven. I can count them on one hand. We're yeah? Good. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> good thing we didn't get uh -huh. those extra digits uh -huh. removed. That silly doctor. Yeah. Gloves are a pain. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm going to paint tonight solely with my Dixie Bell Mini. So I have a whole bunch of my Dixie Bell Minis out. And I love the Dixie Bell Mini for laying on paint. So we're going to get our decorative finish with this. But I'm going to start. Amy with, says your jars look just as clean as hers do. Yeah, this yeah. one. Oh, uh, my hate blue. It, it, it hate getting closed. <laughs> it ain't clean. Yeah, it's uh, like the lid is just set on top and stuck in old paint. That's 
So I don't know. I mean, I usually go through nice. my colors so fast I don't really worry about it, but this one's... That one looks like it was found yeah, on the side of the highway. Sad. It's not even going to close anymore. We're going to start with Stormy Seas. Okay, so... What I'm going to use to do this is a basic cross hatching pattern and I'm going to do it by layering colors on top of each other. So I'm just going to start one color at a time. We're going to run through these. I'm starting with my Stormy Seas. I dipped my brush in barely any paint. I'm not going to use a lot of paint doing this because remember I already have coverage. I'm just laying a decorative finish on top of it. So with barely any paint and my Dixie Belle Mini, I'm going to start cross hatching on top of my piece. And you can see already how it starts building up the texture. And then I'm gonna refill my brush a little bit and I'm gonna start that cross hatching. Refill my brush a little bit. And I'm just kind of going at random. But my random is always on purpose, guys. Um, I know that in the end of this look, if we looked at my finished piece, it stays darker around the edges. So as I'm doing my random cross hatching, I'm still going to end up with more of my darker colors around the edges. That's what? We got Chico in the house. Ooh, Chico, Auburn. that's local. Oh, Auburn, local. Yay. So of course, some sack. Um, we're in El Dorado County, guys. So our governor, I'm going to turn this a little bit because I'm having a hard time reaching it at this angle. So I'm just going to turn it to face me a little bit. That's not very good for the camera. No, sorry mm -hmm. guys. That's, you're going to have pour. to deal. I can get a tripod if we need to. Way to go the extra mile. So I want to get a little bit of this color. I'm going to go through these colors and as I layer them on top of each other, see right now it looks terrible. You guys know it always looks better before or worse before it looks better, right? This is probably where I would start and stop. I promise you, this is the third piece I've done in this finish. It comes, you can turn and show them the full size dresser if you want. I don't want to. That's, <laughs> wow, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to inconvenience you with turning and all. I didn't do my yoga today. Get that drawer all the way in. I don't think you did your yoga any day. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> I know you don't. Okay. So I've kind of cross-hatched my stormy seas. I've got a little bit kind of all over, right? Let's... So here, hold on a second. I'm going to pan around. Yeah, I was just them... waiting for you to stop yapping. Show them the full-size dresser. I'm never going to stop yapping. <laughs> There's zero <laughs> chance of that. Oh, that you totally just missed this really important step over here. Shoot. Now they're, yeah. they're never going to be That's able to it. this. That's the big piece. <laughs> Turn and show the birdie. <laughs> yeah. You gotta be careful you what can, you ask for. You can show them the birdie. Actually, you probably did because I did because it's, it's on its, its yeah. wrap and saran wrap right now. Um, you guys know that I can show that tomorrow, right? Have you guys figured out that it's for the new release of Prima um, transfers that's coming out tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Where have you been? All right. So, what do you guys think? Leave it. Looks perfect. We love it, Brandy. Look at that. It's a roadside find. Yeah, so, you know, this is probably going to be a little bit scary. Now I'm going to take my gravel road is what I'm going to do next. I'm starting with my darker colors. Um, I have several brushes out, but I'll tell you what, as I was doing this finish, I ended up with basically three brushes. Let me show you how I made the separation. I ended up using three brushes. What I considered a light, a light brush for my lightest colors, which was paint blue and the silver. I had one for my uh, Steel Magnolia Moonshine Metallics, and then I ended up with one brush that I shared between Stormy Seas, Vintage Duck Egg, and now my Gravel Road. So you're going to see, and I get asked a lot. <laughs> well, those transfers will be coming out at 12.01 a.m. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I guarantee you guys, you make fun of that, but I guarantee that's when you're going to start seeing posts, because you can schedule posts on Facebook, and so retailers and stuff have posts that are scheduled for 12.01 a.m. And yes, they can. It's gonna be can, like some Black Friday shopping. 12.01, they can put them on their websites and stuff. So it sounds hilarious, but literally that's what people do. So don't be surprised if at 12.01, you start seeing posts about the transfer release because they're scheduled. So now I'm using my Dixieville Gravel Road. Gravel Road is a dark, warm gray. So the gray I chose, it doesn't really show in the final finish. 
But what it's going to do is it's going to give me a base for my Moonshine Metallic. So imagine that where I'm putting the gray now actually ends up being my metallic later. Imagine uh, if my, you will. My Steel Magnolia. Good movie. Again, I'm going kind of random, keeping it darker around the edges than it is in the middle. Still using that same cross-hatching pattern. It does come together, I promise you. You guys have no faith in me, huh? It's actually beautiful. I'm actually thrilled with how this set is. I'll tell you what, I never want to cross-hatch again because <laughs> these are three big pieces and I'm super sick of doing this. I think my arm is starting to tighten up a little bit, but it, it's it's coming out beautiful. I actually really love the set. Okay, not so heavy on the um, gravel road, because like I said, I just really want it to be kind of a base for where I want to put my metallic. Um, it ends up where the blues and then the metallics are what you actually see. Now, could you do this on a less curvy piece? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is just the set. Uh, this is actually custom order. So we went through and where where the inspiration kind of came from is we, when I take an order from a customer, I'm using vintage duck egg now. Same concept. Um, and we exchanged a bunch of photos, which is what I do when I take a custom order. I'll take pictures, ask them for pictures of their room. I'll ask them for pictures of things in their home that they like and kind of gives me an idea for what their taste is. And um, this one, we exchanged some photos from Pinterest and one of them was of a canvas art piece. And this is always, um, a finish is inspired by. It's never going to be an exact match, right? So this is inspired by a canvas piece she sent me. And this was the finish that I thought got closest to that look. So now what's the reason with the cross hatching instead of just going one direction? Because you're going to see this texture in our final look. You're going to see this interweaving of the brush strokes that looks like a linen look. I know you can't see texture on camera very well. You'll see it when I post the um, finished shots of the set. You'll be able to really see the texture in the paint in the brush strokes itself. You're going to see these in the final look. So every brush stroke does matter in this look. Um, I wish I wish that the resolution on can on a video was high enough to show you guys what the cross hatching looks like on the finished pieces, but I know it doesn't. But just trust me, you'll be glad you did it, right? Okay, now I'm going to come in here with a little bit of my Steel Magnolia. And I'm gonna basically use where I put my gravel road is gonna kind of be my base for my Steel Magnolia. And what I think is the coolest about this is you really see the sparkle of the metallic paint up against the flat paints. Now, I know it still looks like a hot mess. You guys are like, really, Bruni? This looks nothing like what you just showed us. This is a first coat. Remember, I usually tell you when I'm blending and stuff that my first coat is me conceptualizing. So this is me getting a basic layout. Yes, Sheila. Let me go ahead and zoom. We're doing metallics. You have to zoom. Now, did Sheila. you add anything? Any wood you bend? Um, this is a mold. This is a mold I added here, and this is just cast in resin. And I added that because this was a really flat area and I thought this goes in line with my hardware, hardware, and then I've got a mold down here. So this needed something. So I did add that one mold that I cast out of resin. Other than that, everything on the piece is original. And I only added that to the nightstand, although this is a three piece set. <laughs> Jesus. Sheila just got here. She's already bossing Sean around. Yeah, she kn yeah. she knows where she stands. Yeah. She knows who's really in charge during this. Sheila's good to us, you guys. She's totally loyal and watches our shows. And uh, Who? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, I appreciate everybody that, you know, follows us loyally. And, and Sheila is one of them that we see her name pop up. And um, she always is a good supporter. What's the color you were just using? Uh, that was the Moonshine Metallics and Steel Magnolia. I poured it into a dish. Okay, I'm going to turn this piece. It looks horrendous on the front, so freeze frame where we are right here. 
The reason I'm going to turn it is because I want this to dry a little bit. And instead of um, hitting it with a heat gun, I'm just going to turn it and we'll keep working keep painting on another side. And when I turn it back, that's such a thin layer of paint that those will be mostly dry. Freeze frame. Yeah. Yeah. You, you really think that we're much more high tech <laughs> than we are. Than we are. Yeah. We're going to fast forward now. And I'm just going to come over to the side and I'm going to do exactly the same thing you just saw me do on the front. So my first color was uh, Stormy Seas. Can you hear the even like... Smack it. Yeah, the smacking sound that you get out of the cross hatching. It's because my brush strokes are barely touching my piece. The sound effects to a kung fu movie. And you have to have a little bit of faith in yourself in the randomness of this. I had... Um, uh, I was messaging with a follower recently and she chose a, a really kind of messy random look and she was a very like regimented clean organized person and so she really struggled with doing a kind of messy look um, so keep that in mind as you're doing this you need to allow yourself a little bit of grace and freedom to just trust that these random brush strokes are going to turn into something as we keep going. So can you guys kind of see, it's a little bit lighter in the center. It's all, it's accidentally on purpose. Um, there's purpose behind every brush stroke that I'm doing on this look. Now I'm gonna come back with my gravel road. If only that held true in real life. The staying at home has increased my center mass. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you guys, we, um, our governor, we're in California, announced yesterday they're going to continue the stay-at-home order. Oh. Um, our county in particular has had, has had no casualties, which I'm super grateful for, and have had minimal cases. Um, we're a fairly rural county, so... Um, I would like if there was like state parks and stuff open, at least we could go hiking or something, but we just feel like there's, you can't even go anywhere. There's nothing to go to. I know people are in trouble for going to the beaches and stuff. I don't even mean like that. Like you can't even just, thank goodness we live on five acres because otherwise we'd be going mad right now. Okay, how are we doing on this? Nice and random. See, I'm, bra I'm breaking a sweat here, guys. That tells you what my cardio routine is like, huh? I shouldn't close these because you don't have to use them. Should just set them up on the top. So I'm just doing exactly on the side what I did on the front. So far, I'm using the same brush for my vintage duck egg, my gravel road, and stormy seas. I, um, if you prefer to not cross-contaminate, uh, then you definitely can use multiple brushes, pour them into separate containers. Uh, those words are not part of my painting routine. So in reference to the base coat, it was not sprayed, correct? No, it was brushed. It was brushed. Um, I'll spray my clear coat on these, but otherwise everything will be brushed. All right. So, I mean, this goes pretty quickly. And what I ended up doing on these is I did this base coat and I let it dry overnight and I came back and we'll, we're gonna do the second coat in a minute. Cause these are, I mean, I'm just slapping these thin cross hatches of paint on and my front is gonna be pretty dry by the time we turn this around back to the front. Give myself a little bit. <clears throat> the reason I'm letting it dry is because if I try to go over this with the next step, it starts blurring these cross hatches, and I don't want to blur them. I want to keep them. You're going to see this through our final layer of paint, only we're going to mute it so it doesn't look so abstract. And, you know, right now it looks like a hot mess. I'm the first person to admit that. It comes together in the next coat. What was your base coat again? Base coat is Dixie Belle Sandbar. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this here. I really like this metallic here. It's kind of dripping down right there. That's a pretty spot. I'm going to turn this back to the front and we'll go back and start on our second coat on there. 
I guess it's not really our second coat it, because I have two coats of the sandbar underneath. It's kind of our second decorative coat. Trying not to get the paint on my hands. So this coat, we're going to introduce water. And so how's the pool coming along? <laughs> and how about a pool party for your avid followers? Yeah, that was kind yeah. of thrown out there. So we um, poured our concrete last weekend um, and we have plaster scheduled, which is actually going to be a pebble finish, but we have our plaster scheduled for what, two weeks? So in like two and a half weeks, we should have water in our pool. Okay, so I'm going to go back and my same colors that I use, I'm going to lay those same colors again. Holy um, moly. Mary says she's so excited. Tomorrow she's buying 40 colors of Dixie Belle. What? Exciting. Are you a retailer or just a really avid user? So I'm going to spray the it first with a time little bit of water. Huh? This is my hate blue. What color? <laughs> Are you paying attention at all? Huh? You didn't do very well in school. Did you? Who is this? <laughs> Same thing. But with that little bit of water, it kind of blurs out that cross hatching motion. And then it starts dulling the ones that are underneath it too. It's almost like doing a wash of paint, like a color wash. A color wash is when you thin your paint down and put it over the top. That's kind of what the paint does. Bring it, in the paint. It paints so abstract anyway. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna do the opposite and it still looks a little crazy. I'm not telling you guys I'm done with this yet. Um, I'm going to do the opposite. So what I did with the darker colors is I did them heavier on the outside, lighter on the in. The lighter, I'm going to do heavier on the inside, lighter as I work out. Light mist of water. My mister bottle that's almost empty. Ugh. Let me grab this other one over here. Can't even talk to you right now. I'm so unprepared. Because I really want these to be light, wispy, thin brush strokes. So where's the uh, paint blue container? How do, you, how do you spell it? I'm being serious here. Oh, <laughs> I, never, Hello. I never know. H-A-I-N-T. Like paint, but replace but the paint. B with an H. Oh, ooh. Like paint, but paint. Yeah. <laughs> it paint paint. It is. Um, I know there's a story behind the name paint blue, and I've seen it posted, and I've actually never read it. But you can go Google it, and it has a meaning behind it. Dixieville, obviously, all their names are kind of southern inspired. Okay, so I like where that is, and I'm going to start alternate, alternating my colors now. I'm going to go back with my Stormy Seas, and same thing, a little bit of water this time, and it's going to be thinner. Don't be hating. So you can see that cross hatching underneath without it being so just ridiculously abstract. And I could keep going so that areas where I feel like, oh, whoops, I got a little bit too much of my um, stormy seas. I can come back over it with a little bit more of my paint. So you can correct yourself till you get the overall look that you want. Um, I, you'll notice I'm saving my metallics for last. I'm putting those into my combinations last. Here you go, Sharon. Can you guys see how it starts building up? And I can see the strokes underneath and then the more watered down ones over the top kind of dull it down a little bit. So it's not, it, I mean, it's not so bizarre looking. The little bit of water. Paints are spirits or ghosts. Oh, is it? Thank you. Used in Nolens. Oh. Okay, now you're going to make me want to go read it because that actually sounds like kind of a cool story. That's not what I was expecting at all. Yeah, and uh, so all the Dixie Bell colors kind of have that, you know, obviously Dixie Bell. They have a theme, but I'm in California. So just to go back a little bit, you could put this on like flatter pieces, not so curvy. Absolutely. This is just what I happen to be working on, but this would be a great... Uh, finish to add interest if you've got a really flat front piece. So that little bit of water also allows the second coat of paint that I'm putting on, the colors start kind of blending together in spots. So I end up with some different shades of blue. 
and a little bit of green comes out of the vintage duck egg. So I, I stopped in the middle of the sentence, but I was um, telling you that I'm doing the metallics last because I don't want to lose the sheen of them. And you guys know, uh, you know, for example, with metallics, if you start mixing them, if you mix too much with the regular paints, you lose the metallic sheen. So there's no point in really layering them um, quite as much. I really want them on the top because I don't want to lose that sheen in them. Okay. So now I'm going to come back with my vintage duck egg. So it's really making a mess and then in the end you start bringing it together. Um, this is also really pretty with a little bit of vinegar and letting um, the second coat drip over the first one. You get a really pretty look with that too. I'm not quite doing the drippy thing right now. Um, but as an alternative, if you're comfortable with vinegar, this is a pretty look with vinegar too. What are your colors again? So I've got Sorry. Dixie Bell Haint Blue, Stormy Seas, Gravel Road, Vintage Duck Egg. Um, I'm using Gravel Road right now, by the way. The Moonshine Metallics in Steel Magnolia. And... Base Coat? Uh, the base coat was Sandbar. Can you guys see how it's starting to soften up a little bit? Is it starting to come together for you guys? Because I feel like it is for me. So that was a little bit of Gravel Road. Gravel Road I'm using the least of. Because I want the grays to sh or the blues to show. I don't really want this to turn super gray. So now that I feel like I've got coverage, my cross hatching kind of all over, I like where my colors are, I'm going to bring my metallics in. So what else would the vinegar do, or is it just to make the drip it makes look? It, it makes the paint separate. It makes the paint separate. It, it veins. It makes the paint vein out. Um, so it's really just to create kind of a different look in a, in dripping. Um, you don't have to all out let it drip down the front of your piece. You can just mist it and it will cause the paint to vein in spots in place. Okay, now I'm using my Moonshine Metallic. This is my Steel Magnolia. And I'm hitting this with very little paint. A little mist of water. And I'm going to streak in some of that metallic. And I know on camera, um, metallics are very, 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 very hard to photograph. Even still shots, you have to have specific lighting focused just on the metallics to really get the sheen difference in them. Um, so I'm guessing you guys probably can't tell a whole lot. But this gives it just that really romantic look. So for the record, we're not using vinegar. I'm not. I just wanted to offer that as an alternative. If you want to get creative and play around. And you would just spray it. Yeah, just mist it. I would. I put it in a mister bottle. A 50-50 mix of white vinegar and water. Um, I put it in a mister bottle and just mist it over the top. And right now your mister bottle, bottle only it's has only water. water. Only water. I just wanted to offer that as an alternative. If you want to play around with vinegar, that this is a cool look to do it with. Um, I'd show you on this one, but because this is a set, I already have two pieces that match, and I don't need a one that doesn't match. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would be throwing a wrench into my... I'm having a hard time with this spot right here because I'm not sitting close enough to it, so this spot I feel like is kind of off. And what brushes are you using? I have the Dixie Bell Mini, and right now I'm at three brushes that I'm using. And how are they I'm... natural or synthetic? These are synthetic bristle brushes. Now I have a lot of gray up here and I want to kind of bring that down. So I'm just going to cross hatch back in some blue. This spot got a little light. So I'm going to cross hatch back in some um, stormy seas. Okay, let's play with our silver metallic. So here's the purpose of this. Very little on my brush. I'm using my same brush I used for my haint blue. I'm basically going to do now a wash of this metallic over the top and can you see this is why the glaze would work fine for this because it's such a thin layer this is the silver metallic 
it's such a thin layer and I'm just using it kind of as a as a color wash over the top. Again, it's just doling down those really abstract brush strokes. And then it's adding that metallic sheen over the top. I'm holding my brush out at the end of the handle, so I'm not putting any pressure. When you hold it down here, you tend to want to put more pressure on your bristles. So by holding it here, I can really do this flicking. See how I'm holding it differently than when I normally brush my paint? I'm just hitting the piece and that sil that wash of silver metallic over the top, every, every layer I'm dulling down the abstractness and it just gives it this softness. I'm going to take some of my Stormy Seas and I'm gonna dig it around this mold because it's not, uh, the flicking is not getting it into the crevices. So I'm gonna dig it in there. And then I'm gonna come back and dole that out. Kind of mix it back in with my other brush strokes. Just so it has paint all the way around and that mold gets covered. So. Brittany says your flicking technique is on point. Yeah, you got a yeah. good backhand. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Wait, so you've heard. Uh, what? So I'm obviously I'm not liking these two legs right here. I would come back and those would need some attention. Overall, I like this in here. How am I doing on time? Because I want to show you guys the wax over the top of this too. It's a combination of paint and waxes that's going to give you the full look. How's this look? You can come back and keep playing with it. I obviously only have limited time on camera, so there may be areas where, you know, brush strokes I would change or, you know, I want to layer in more of a certain color here or there. Um... I'm trying to kind of keep my metallic because this is such a curvy piece. Um, I really like the metallics along the edge. Sally was on break at the hospital watching. <gasps> Hi, so Sally. So I want to thank her. Sally, you guys. Back to Sally it. Sally is with Ty Bella Restoration. Go give her a follow. She's also a nurse, but she's a Dixville paint retailer. Her and her husband, Chris, are phenomenal. She's so talented. They're hilarious. And super sweet. So please go give them a follow at Ty Bella Restoration. Um, but I'm kind of keeping my metallics concentrated on the sides here. And that's because this is a really curvy piece. And that way it'll catch the light. And then I've got the metallic that I brushed over the top there. So this catches the light here really pretty too. <clears throat> so what I want to show you, that's the basic finish, you guys. That gets us to where I want to be. I like the front of this, but I want to show you what the next step in this is. So instead of, you know, I don't like this spot right here, really want to perfect this. And then of course the side. So this is where we came from in the beginning. Do you guys remember? This is what we did at first. And then when we come back with that little bit of water, it mutes it down a little bit. I've still got all that cross hatching in there and I can still see it, but it just gave us a diluted layer over the top. It's really pretty. So I'm gonna turn this to this side and we're actually gonna do the waxes on top of this finish. This one is a side that I already did, it's already dry. Let me get my paints out of the way. And we're gonna put some waxes over the top of this. Um, this does not have any clear coat on this and I'll tell you why. I normally like to clear coat before I put waxes on. I did not on this look because it's a grungy look so I'm okay if my waxes give me kind of a dirty look. Um, the reason that you clear coat before dark waxes is because it gives you more control over your waxes. It means you can wipe them back. If you put too much on, um, you can wipe it back off. So let me get all this paint out of the way and I'm gonna show you what I'm working with as far as waxes. I have Dixie Belle Besting Wax in black and then this is Dixie Belle Gilding Wax in black. This is also not available anymore it's coming back they're reformulating the gilding waxes retailers still have this you guys so find your local retailer a lot of them still have black gilding wax how do i know because one of our local retailers shipped this to me after it went unavailable on the dixie bell website so thank you to our local retailers you guys save us too um so that's what i'm using i'm using besting wax in black and then gilding wax in black sorry i'm getting too chatty and then I've got a variety of, of little artist brushes. And 
These are natural bristle brushes. I like natural bristle brushes for um, waxes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my gilding wax in black. The difference between these two is the gilding wax is a lot more potent. It's gonna give you a lot more um, concentrated look. And I'm just gonna take a, a natural bristle artist brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is come ride all these crevices. Now again, this is just my painted finish. I don't have any clear coat on here. And I'm writing the crevices because this is what the area is that I want to darken up. And I'm going to soften this out, but right now I want the darkest areas to be in the deepest part of the crevice. So I'm going to put the darkest wax in the deepest part of the crevice. It's like the eyeliner. So if we have guys on. Oh, don't make her cry. This is what girls do. <clears throat> so I'm just going to write all these crevices along here. And then I'm going to come back with the less dense wax, the best stain wax, and we're going to blur this out a little bit. So what's the difference between gilding and decor wax? Um, the decor waxes are the name of the redesign with Prima gilding waxes. Does that make sense? The it's just a name. Yeah, it's just their, their name, their product name. They named it decor wax. It's, it's, it can be used on home decor, but it's a gilding wax. Um, the Dixie Belle black is not metallic, so this is a flat black. If you don't have the gilding wax, you can use the regular wax for that same purpose. It's just going to give you a little bit lighter coverage. It's not quite as, um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Potent, opaque. I need a rag. Let me grab a rag really quick before I start doing this. Sorry guys, I forgot to grab a rag over here. So I'm gonna grab a rag. This brush is a little bit um, larger. So instead, this is my eyeliner brush. This would be a foundation brush. <laughs> I know you guys have no idea, guys have no idea what I'm talking about, but girls will understand. And I'm gonna, I dip this in a tiny bit of my black wax. And now I'm gonna blur this out. Obviously, I've used this before on black wax. It starts getting a little bit dirty, and I leave it that way because it gives me that smudgy effect that I love that you get with waxes. And then I'm going to take this. So do you see how I smudged out that line there? Oh, my paint is wet. Ah, I'll have to do Hello. it. Hello. Yeah, sorry. Let me wipe that back, and I'll come do it at the other end. And I can kind of swirl my brush in here, and it gives me this smudgy, like, it's shadowing, it's shading with waxes. And then I put a little bit in this crevice up here. I'm gonna smudge that out too. So like I said, this is unsealed paint. A Little bit more wax, can you guys see? I'm just tip, 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 like a tiny bit. And if I get too you much, do that every time? I'll even, yes, I make that sound, just it helps me. And then I'm gonna dig this brush into the corner and I'll kind of use like a swirling motion. Oh, she looks like a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, this, this is a smoky <laughs> eye. So why I say that when you said train wreck is because I cannot do a smoky eye without looking like I got into a bar fight. But I'm giving my furniture piece a smoky eye look. So I'm going to tip my brush again, barely any wax. You can see, let me show you how little I'm getting. Let me find a, let me find a clean spot on this rag. What is that rag? <laughs> this is, Sean and I are now selling tie-dye. So if you would like to purchase this, please let me know. It's custom made. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this inside out and find a semi-clean area so you guys can see how little wax I'm getting. Tip, so tip. you have no clear wax None. on this right now. It's None. not coated, it's not sprayed, no nothing. gator hide, nothing. Nothing. It's this raw is paint. Right after uh, the look we did on the front, I'm doing this on top of the raw paint. Which is not normal for you. No, it is not normal for me. And I was okay doing it on this look because I want like a grungier, dirty look. Now let me give you an example. Um, I'm going to put more wax right here than I want. See how I kind of made it heavy? It doesn't wipe back very clean. I could take baby wipes because the Dixie Bell waxes are water-based and I could probably get most of that off. But I have to wipe out it a lot more. Whereas if I had clear coat on this, I could wipe that off no problem. 
The reason I'm okay doing this over the raw paint is because this is a grungy, dirty look. If I get too much or it doesn't wipe away, that's okay. You're going for a Tammy Faye look? Yeah, this is Tammy Faye. This is a little too heavy on the eye makeup, ladies. This is your Saturday night going out look. Whoa. So, oh, but what I wanted to show you is, is just, I'm just tipping my brush. So it barely has any wax. I'm not, it's not clumping onto my rag, but you can see how it gives you that kind of smudgy effect. Painting my step into marriage counseling. How do you know about uh, what, what's going on on Saturday night? I mean, this night? is what I heard. No, this is how I used to do my makeup when we were dating. You fell for <laughs> it every time. That's why we have three kids now. Hello. <laughs> TMI? As long as it's not followed by a PSA. <laughs> so I'm using kind of a swirling and um, I'm concentrating that dark wax in the corner. So from here, once I finish this dark wax all over my piece, from here, I would clear coat over the top of this because I'm using waxes decoratively and I want them to stay in place. And then I also want to protect this paint finish I did. So from here is where I would go ahead and apply my clear coat. And what color wax is this? This is all black. This is vesting wax in black. Going in. And then this is uh, the black gilding wax from Dixie Belle, which is my new favorite thing. Retailers, I might be cleaning you guys out of this because I'm so sad it's not available. What I'm mad about is I actually like fell in love with it after it got discontinued. That's How what you got mad about? That? Everything I love gets discontinued. It's like they Wait. know. I'm still here. <laughs> Not for long. Wait a minute. I'm going to ride this crevice down here. This is my gilding wax. Uh, the gilding wax I'm using a smaller brush with and I'm putting it inside the deep crevices only. And then I'm smudging it out with my best name wax. So once you apply this wax, how long before you top coat it? Okay, you're so gonna clear it? this is dug into my paint and it's a very thin layer. So even if I come back and I brush this with a clear coat, it's not gonna pull this wax back off. It's not a heavy layer at all. Versus if I was putting it all over and had it on a little bit heavier. So this, I mean, I'm using this swirling motion and very little wax and it's dug into that paint. So I would say with this, 24 hours, you don't have to wait. Usually I say 72 hours if you've got a heavier coat on. I'm even wiping back the excess so that what I'm left with is really just enough that it changes the color of the paint around the edges. Now, do you, <laughs> see Amanda, you caught that one. <laughs> Am I being discontinued? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hmm, wait, I'm still here. Yeah, hmm. I might be shopping around. So you do not sand before you clear coat? Good, or? Qu uh, good question. I, I On did, this. Um, okay. Um, I would sand before clear coat. I did not sand before this wax. This wax that I'm putting on is literally right after the step of the wet paint on the front because I want the texture of the paint. So I still have all that cross hatching that I did. And each one of those brush strokes makes a little tiny texture. And my wax is picking it up. And it's really cool. So I did not sand before this wax. I will come back and just lightly, and I'm not, I don't even like to call it sanding, and just lightly brush this before I clear coat. That just gets away any like huge bumps and lumps and chunks that are in my paint and everything. Now the pearly white color. Yes. What does that happen to be? Instead uh, of me renaming it pearly white. Yeah, it is the Dixie Belle um, Silver Metallic. This product is discontinued. So I gave you an alternative at the end um, that the pearlescent glaze would actually work because you saw that I just was, I was basically using the, the metallic as a glaze over the top. I just want a thin layer to dull down those brush strokes. So I gave you the alternative of the pearlescent glaze, but I am using Dixie Belle Silver Metallic that is discontinued. I know those two products right there. Gone, I baby, can't even gone. talk right now. Yeah. So the pearlescent glaze, um, would absolutely work for that and it would give you a little bit of shimmer over the top that's really all i'm using it for is to dull down the brush strokes and give me a little bit of shimmer all right you guys i've been on forever i have talked your oh ears my gosh. off you guys are so sick of me right now but look how pretty our piece is i'm not paint. this is the paint finish we did i actually really like it i think except for that spot up there and probably right here are places i would change but i really love this drawer i wouldn't change this drawer at all um 
I might do a little bit more of the silver to dull this down a little bit and maybe concentrate the, the gold a little bit. But, but my changes to this would be minimal from what you saw me do on camera. I'm gonna put the black wax over this and I will end up where I am on the other pieces that I showed you. Um, you guys wanna see my hardware really quick? Let me show you what the hardware looks like on this. Are you bringing it over? I don't wanna to have to move. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, you stay there. I'll hit this with some gilding wax so it ties in. I'm just gonna pop this into the holes. And then I've got my hardware that's got that soft metallic on it. And that's gonna kind of be where I land. So anyway, I hope you guys found that interesting. I think it's a really pretty look. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brush by Brandy. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And I just started a TikTok account that has nothing on it yet, but there will be. Um, I'll upload some videos. <laughs> yeah, Sean's TikTok account. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm here live every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, again, you can go to the Dixie Bell website. I put the link above in the post. If you want to purchase any of the stuff I used here tonight, um, I always appreciate purchases through that link. I make a small percentage of those sales. You can also find your local retailer through there um, and see who's in your area that sells the paint. So thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Sorry for being cooped up again. And uh, thanks for watching.